Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I am now answering question number five from the um, <coughs> Mechanics M1 GCE syllabus, uh, which is from Edexcel 76677 from June 2019. And this question is a question about a ring of mass 0.5 kilograms is attached to one end of a light and extensible string. The ring is threaded on a fixed rough vertical wire. So it's a fixed wire which is rough, so there's tension involved here. The ring, sorry, there's a friction involved here, I mean. The ring is held in equilibrium with the string taut. The string makes an angle of alpha with the wire. This is alpha, not A, alpha. The angle alpha with the wire, where the tangent of alpha is equal to 4 over 3, as shown in figure 2. The coefficient of friction between P and the wire is a quarter. The ring is modeled as a particle. Given that P is on the point of sliding up the wire, find the tension in the string. Okay, so now there's a few questions being asked about this type of situation on the channel. So I'm going to go through this in a bit of detail and try to explain those points. So we have certain forces acting on this ring. So those forces that are acting on this ring are its weight, which is acting vertically down. So I'll just draw the weight over here, just put it slightly to the side. That's the weight, which is the mass times g, so it's 0.5g. So that's the weight of this particle, 0.5g acting down. You also have the tension in the string, which is acting along this string here. So you have the tension in the string. Do we, were we told the tension? No, we weren't. Oh, we have to find that, actually. So that you have the tension in the string acting in this direction here. And you also have, because it's on the point of sliding up the wire, you, it means friction is going to be acting down because it's opposing the motion. Friction always opposes the motion. So you'll have a frictional force also acting down. Okay. And it's on the point of sliding. So it's on the point of moving. So friction has reached its highest value. Now, some people are asking the reaction force. This is two surfaces in contact with each other. The ring is in contact with this wire. Which direction do we draw the reaction force? Well, it must always be perpendicular to the surface, so perpendicular to the wire. And of course, because this is an equilibrium, it can't be this direction here, because then the, the resultant force on horizontally won't be zero. It has to be the reaction force is going to be in this direction. Okay, otherwise it won't basically counter the tension that's acting. It's going to, the tension will have a component in this direction, which is balanced out by the reaction force. So the reaction force is going to be in this direction. It has to be in this direction. It can't be in that direction in this case, because um, the, both horizontal forces, therefore, will de be in the same direction, and it won't be in equilibrium. So that's how we know that the reaction force is definitely in this direction here. Okay, so basically now what we have is we have to resolve the forces horizontally and vertically and all the forces are resolved horizontally and vertically except for the tension okay so the the, the weight the friction the reaction are all vertical and horizontal but the tension has to be resolved in this direction and in that direction so now the angle we got here is alpha here okay so if i want to resolve the tension in this direction i'm going to be using cosine because I have to go into the angle. Okay, I have to go into the angle. I'll draw, it. I'll draw this over there because it's visible better. Okay, so this is going to be T times cosine alpha. Again, some students were asking, how do you know it's cosine here? Because if I make a right angle triangle out of this, then this is the side that's adjacent. So if I resolve, this will be X over um, the hypotenuse, which is T, X over T equals cosine alpha is cosine alpha equals um so so sorry x equals t times cosine alpha you have x over t is equal to cosine alpha adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine alpha so x is t cosine alpha and this is like the 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 opposite side the horizontal component is like the opposite side so this will be you could say um you know x over t Equal, uh, equal sine alpha. So sine alpha would therefore be, uh, sorry, the x therefore would be t sine alpha. So this is t times sine alpha. 
All right, so we've resolved the forces in the horizontal and vertical directions, and we can now hopefully find what we need to find. Now, we also need to deal with the fact that um, the tangent of the angle is 4 over 3, so that will help us find what sine and cosine of the angle is. Now, remember, it's much easier for us to make a little triangle to work out the value of the sine and cosine of alpha instead of finding the actual value of the angle itself because we don't want we don't need the, the angle we need what the sine and the cosine of the angle is in our equations so let's say this is alpha tan is opposite over adjacent so this is going to be five because of you know pythagorean triple tan uh, these are two uh, shorter sides this is the hypotenuse it's three squared plus four squared is 25 square root of 25 is five so we can say that the sine of alpha from this the sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse which is four fifths and the cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse which is three fifths so now um, we can start resolving these forces now i know we also know that we've got the coefficient of friction is a quarter and we know that f max is equal to mu r so with all this specific information we can now hopefully find the value of t so if we consider the forces acting vertically i can say because this thing is an equilibrium the force is acting upwards which is t cosine alpha balanced with the forces acting downwards which is f max plus 0 0.5 g and if i resolve the forces acting horizontally i can say that uh, t sine alpha acting in this direction is equal to the reaction force acting in that direction Okay, so those are the forces resolved. Now, as we said, um, we're trying to find what T is. Now, I know that F max is equal to mu R. So it's a quarter times R, which is a quarter times um, a quarter times T sine alpha, because R is T sine alpha. So a quarter times t sine alpha, so f max is going to therefore be a quarter times t times the sine of alpha, which is four fifths. The fours cancel out, so I can say f max is going to be one over five times t. Okay, so I know that that's f max. So now I can use the second equation. I can say t times the cosine of alpha is equal to f max plus 0.5 g. So the cosine of alpha is 3 fifths, so three, that's 3t three over 5 is equal to t over 5, f max is t over 5, plus 0.5g. So we want to find what t is, so I can multiply both sides of this by 5, in which case I'll get 3t is equal to t plus 5 times 0 0.5 is 2.5. Okay, so I can say 2t is equal to 2.5g. So T is equal to 2.5 G divided by 2, which is 1.25 G Newtons. Now you can leave your answer in terms of T if you want. It's no problem. Okay. Or you could, if you want to also, one second, let me just sort this out. Sorry about that. I have to renew my subscription to that. So we got 1.25 times 9.8, which gives us 49 over 4, which is 12.25, 12.25 newtons. Now you can leave your answer like this, or you could give your answer to 2SF. So you could write it as 12 newtons if you want, or if you want to, you can write it to 3SF, so 12.3 newtons. Okay, so any of these three ways of writing your answer is perfectly fine. Okay, I would personally just leave it in terms of G. I think that's better, and that's fine. Okay, so there's the answer to part A, found the tension in the string. Now we're going to go on to part B. It says, find the magnitude of the smallest tension in the string, which will keep the ring in equilibrium, given that the string remains at an angle alpha to the wire. Okay, so now... Let's take this diagram. Okay, so what do they mean here? The magnitude of the smallest tension in the string that will keep this 
in equilibrium. So let's just quickly put the forces back. You've got the tension in the string, you've got the uh, weight, you've got the reaction force. Okay, those are the three main forces that don't really change um, the weight was 0.5 G. Okay, so this is a different part of the question. So the tension we just found doesn't apply now. We want to find the smallest tension in the string which will keep the ring in equilibrium. That means basically if the tension was not there this ring would slide down it would slide down the wire if the tension was what's stopping it from sliding down the wire the tension in the string the part a of the question was we found the tension that will be enough to stop it from sliding up the wire okay that requires a bigger tension than the tension needed to stop it from sliding down the wire Okay, to stop it from sliding down the wire, you need to pull less because if it's about to slide down the wire, then of course the frictional force is going to be acting upwards. Okay, if it's about to slide down, the friction is going to be acting up. And if we're finding the the uh, you know the smallest tension to keep it in equilibrium, it's going to be in equilibrium, but it's going to be just about to slide down. Okay. So you have to um, you know, have enough tension to stop it from just sliding down. The smallest tension, okay, to just stop it from sliding down. Just to stop it. If it, the tension was any less, it would slide down. Okay. So F max has been achieved because we can say it's just about to slide down. It's reached this maximum value of friction. So in this case, the difference between this question and the last question is the frictional forces acting up the plane rather than uh, up the wire rather than down the wire. We're just preventing it from sliding down. So if we make the um, equations in this case, we got um, acting vertically would be, you say, if, if it's about to slide down, so I'll take down as positive actually. It's about to slide down. I like to always take the direction of movement or of you know the, the movement that's about to take place as positive. So I'll say 0.5 G minus F max and minus t times remember this is the the component of this tension in this direction was t times cosine alpha and here's t times sine alpha so this is t times cosine alpha and this is t times sine alpha so it's minus t times um so 0.5 g so is is equal to f max plus t times cosine alpha because in equilibrium 0.5 g is equal to f max plus t times cosine alpha here f equals m a is equal to zero m the amount there's no acceleration so that's the resultant force is zero so this upward force equals the downward force okay so now that's the equation from the vertical components horizontally what we can say is again we can say r is equal to t times sine of alpha so if we do a very similar thing we know that um, we know that r is equal to t times the sine of alpha if we remember rightly from the last part of the question the sine of alpha was um, 4 over 5 so this is going to be 4 over 5 so that's 40 over 5 that's r and we can say from this equation 0.5 g equals mu times r plus t times 3 over 5 so that's 3 t over 5 3 t over 5 so we know that f max is going to be um, as we mentioned mu r so it's going to be a 1 quarter times 4 over 5 t it's the same value we had got before 1 1 quarter uh, 1 quarter t so we got Basically, this is F max. We don't need to put mu r here. We'll just put F max. That's one fifth t. So 0 0.5 g equals one fifth t plus three over t um, three over t three t over five. Sorry. So we can say that this is going to be 0 0.5 g is equal to four t over five. So four t is equal to 2.5 g. So t in this case is 2.5 g over so we have 2.5 g divided by 4 2.5 divided by 4 gives us 5 over 8 which is 0 0.625 0 0.625 g newtons 
um, which you can leave in that form if you wish to as I said or you can multiply by 9.8 and write that as 49 over 8 so 6.125 6.125 newtons you can write that to 2SF or 3SF you can write that as 6.1 newtons you could write that as 6.13 newtons I would prefer to leave it in this form T equals 0 0.625 G newtons. Okay, you can leave it even as a fraction if you wanted to, but that's fine. That's the answer to part B of this question. Okay, so the important points of this question are that in the second, in the first case, if we look at the first case, this ring is about to slide up the wire. So the tension is so it's 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 not just preventing it from sliding down. If there was no string there, if there was no tension in the string. If it was just the ring here, it would slide down. So the, the tension in the string is stopping it from sliding down, but also it's about to pull it up here because it's about to slide up the plane, up the wire. Therefore, the tension is acting in the opposite direction to prevent it. And it's just about to slide up, so friction has reached its maximum value, but this thing is still in equilibrium, right? So there's no acceleration. So it's reached its maximum value, so that gives you the, you know, the tension in the string that will be enough for this to be in equilibrium. And just about to slide up the power uh, up the wire in the second case it's different this ring is about to slide down the wire the tension in the string is just enough to prevent that from happening so of course it will be less of a tension than the previous case just enough to stop it from sliding down the plane in this case if it's about to slide down the friction is stopping it and it's 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 uh, acting up the wire it's acting upwards on the wire so that frictional force in combination with t cosine alpha will be equal to the weight all right so that's why it's going to be less there so there's the answer to this question i hope that was clear some people were asking about especially about this reaction force of course it has to balance out this thing's in equilibrium it can't be on that side it has to be on this side okay otherwise this thing wouldn't be in equilibrium but the horizontal forces must be equal and um, you know that's something that we should uh, realize and um, you know, those were some of the questions that were, were asked about this type of situation. So I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions about this particular um, paper, which I forgot to put the label on this side, but this particular paper, June 2019, M1, can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this topic, which is about statics, can be found in the playlist over here. Now, this is a, a topic about rings, which hasn't come up too often, but it does come up. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And thank you for watching and see you soon.